Hi guys, so here is a bit of an OpenTunes tip. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my webcam so that I'm not um, blocking a part of the screen here because the, the um, schematic is actually kind of important for this shot. So what I had until just a bit ago was this shot where, and let's go ahead and frame that to the camera. Uh, so this was basically what I had. Okay, so he's basically getting ready for action. One thing I did to make it a little more interesting was I took these two frames out of this level. I just I just grabbed them like this. You can do this anytime you want and just drag them around. Put them in a different uh, column. Creates a new level. And then for just this level in the effect schematic... I added a directional blur to just these two frames. So when it renders, you get some motion blur right there. Not totally necessary, but I thought it looked cool. So that was one thing. But then what I decided was I wanted to extend the shot a little more because what I'm working on in Krita right now is essentially this shot where the guy's running like a madman into the... Um, you know, into the camera, right? And actually, this is kind of the wrong one. This is the correct one. So there's there's a background in here that uh, kind of flows backwards as he's running into it. I don't know at the end of the day if the edit for this is going to work correctly. But what I was thinking is I want this guy to be running and leaping into action first. I, I didn't want the action to stop here. So how did I solve it? Well, what I did was I took... I took these, I, I added a bunch of frames by just, um, I probably, I don't even remember actually, but I probably hit alt down arrow, which simply takes whatever's going on in the X sheet and extends it down, including including um, animation keyframes and everything. It just, just moves everything. So for me, I, I don't know if these are the default uh, hotkeys, but for me, if I hit alt down arrow, everything gets moved down. If I hit alt up arrow, everything gets taken up and sucked away and disappears so meaning that if I hit alt up arrow right now um, let me show you we'll see if it causes me trouble I'll go one two three four five see what it's see what's happening so now with that I'm gonna just undo that okay so now what I did was I took the main column of of my guy and I actually don't want this rendered at this point that way I can turn things off and on fairly efficiently um, let's turn off this ninja in his shadows. Let's turn off this ninja and let's go ahead and um, turn off the uh, background. Uh, boom. Okay, so we just can focus on what we want to focus on, which is this character. So I extended the frames down a bit and then I took it, uh, these, this group of frames and just moved them over to a new level so I could deal with them completely separately from the rest of the action. Because Whereas we have different drawings here, which you obviously can see here, these drawings. Um, down here, what I wanted to do was use the plastic tool and just save myself some time and some drawing. So what I did was I moved this, this picture, effectively, moved it over here. And then I hit the X key, which invokes the plastic tool. Okay, when you invoke the plastic tool, you can do what's called creating a mesh and it effectively creates a polygonal mesh around whatever is drawn in the frame. Uh, so in your drawing. And then you hit apply. And then what I did was in in this mode over here, and I'll turn this on now so we can see it. Um, the next thing you do is you go into build skeleton mode. And in build skeleton mode, you actually um, draw a skeleton. Now I'm going to leave it to you to experiment with this because you kind of learn to get a feel for a, an effective skeleton versus a skeleton that's going to cause you problems downstream. So you want to play with that. But once you built the skeleton, hit the animate button, and you can actually start, you know, moving things around. So as I said, I, I wanted to limit the influence of the plastic tool just to these last three frames. And then what I did was I just used the, the plastic tool skeleton to have him sort of leap into frame. Now one thing you've, that's interesting here is this distortion right here. 
and, and so this might be the most valuable part of this video is showing how you can mitigate that. If I go back here and I go, this really speaks right to what I was saying earlier. If I go right here, select that node or bone, whatever you want to call it, okay, and then click here, I've just added an extra bone. Okay, now that should give me a little bit more control over this animation. So I want to go to each of these keyframes and just massage them a little bit. Now this is moving fairly quickly. You know, he's going to be, he's jumping through into the frame, or, you know, out of frame, really, on threes. So it's kind of okay to let a little distortion get by, but we don't want to let it get too crazy. So I think that'll do the trick. Now, so that this animates correctly like an anime, what I did was I went into my preferences, and I went into the animation section, and I changed the interpolation to constant animation steps three so what that means is nothing is actually going to happen um, except for every third frame I didn't really have to do that because I put keys in every frame and by using constant interpolation that means that open tunes is not going to like calculate any positions in between here and here it's not going to gradually go from here and here it's just going to jump so for my purposes truth of the matter is I could have left this as one which is really preferred. Um, and I'm going to switch this back into speed in, speed out. Because normally if I'm using the animate tool and whatnot, I usually am wanting it to be on ones because I'm probably doing like a uh, camera move or something like that. So in this case, by setting it like that, it, it did the interpolation correctly. And then the other thing that's kind of important is this guy's got a shadow. If you look really closely, you can see that the shadow turns off and on. So how do you map the shadow so it gets controlled by those bones as well? Well, what you do is you go into your schematic, and in the schematic, you could uh, you, you had column 7, which is this one, that's going through this column mesh, which is what distorts it, animates it, in effect. Well, by taking column 12, which is just I, I took because originally the shadows also were just one level so I took just the frames that pertain to this bit of plastic tool animation and I drag them into another level another column which now allows me to work with them independently of all the rest and then all I did down here in the schematic is take column 12 which is this column and instead of it being you know going straight into the the, the table as it were and by the way there's there's a fair amount of uh, bogus junk here in the schematic that I'm not going to try to explain because it's a holdover from uh, earlier when there was other stuff in this scene uh, that's been deleted so I'm not going to address that but the bottom line is you take your shadow layer whatever layers you want and if you feed the, those layers into the column mesh then they also get carried along and animated by the plastic tool so the other thing I want to do now is I want to do the exact same thing I did before right here. Okay, I want to take column 7, and there it is, and I want to add a directional blur. Now, this might not work out the greatest, because what I might, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's okay. What I was going to say is, I'm not going to put the blur on the shadow layer. Okay, I'm not going to mess around with trying to combine the two and then put them both through the directional blur. I'm just thinking... Um, We'll just let it, let let him be blurred without the the uh, shadows being blurred. So with that, we should be able to turn these guys back on, turn everything back on, and uh, well, how long did this take? Ten minutes. Okay. And frankly, actually doing it only took about ten minutes too. Normally, when I'm done using the plastic tool, I just turn it off so I can't see it. And with that, let's go ahead and hit the animate. Uh, the playback tool I should say which is L and it'll loop it and we should see what the final um, rendered thing looks like boom if we turn on the effects like that okay so once it caches it should play full speed so there you go now why is that why is it giving me a little flash I wonder if yep there's why you can see right here it's it's ending one frame to uh, 
one frame too late. I'm going to go ahead and hit Alt A and actually just extend that last frame. So I like it. So now we'll be able to go from this motion forward, I would assume, if it all works out, into this. And then we're going to be going into this, just a quick look back on her part. And then we can finally get back to the original action that took place, which is this. She kicks the guy. So with that, that's a 10-minute quick tip on the plastic tool. And as you guys know, there will be more later.